Developing an estimate of the number of trucks generated for a proposed development is a very important part of the TIA or TIS process. The primary source of trip generation data is from the Institute of Transportation Engineers, ITE, and their trip generation manual. They have a variety of land use types for trip generation data, including residential, lodging, recreational, institutional, medical, office, retail, and services. It's important to pick the correct type of land use when estimating the trips generated for a proposed facility. And the process for estimating those trips includes choosing that appropriate land use, choosing the appropriate analysis time period and independent variable, developing the estimate of exiting and entering trips through either an average rate or an equation. We also need to keep in mind that collecting local data is a great option if it's available. Selecting whether to use the equation or the average rate is based on the equation's R squared value. R squared describes how well the equation fit the data. So if the R squared is greater than 0.75, you should use the equation. That's the preferred method. But if the equation isn't usable, if that R squared isn't provided or is less than 0.75, you should use the average rate if the standard deviation is less than 1.1 times the average rate. Otherwise, you need, do need to collect local data. So we have an example here. Estimate the trips generated by all vehicles at a gasoline station with 14 fueling positions that also has a convenience market and a fast food restaurant. We want to look at a weekday PM peak hour of the gasoline station. And we have both the data plot and graph that would be similar to the IT trip generation manual. So the important thing here is to make sure that, again, we have the right type. And this does match what we were given in the problem statement, a gasoline or service station with convenience market and fast food restaurant. We're going to look at our average vehicle trip ends based on the number of vehicle fueling positions. And that was given to us as 14. So that's an important independent variable we're going to use in this process. We also know that we want to look at the weekday and we want the PM peak hour of the generator. And we're told that here in the problem statement as well. We want the PM weekday peak hour. And it's the peak hour of the gasoline station. So that's the what this of generator means. We're told that there are 15 studies that were used to develop this information, the average vehicle number of vehicle fueling positions was 12. So 14 is not far off from that. So that's a pretty good thing. We probably wouldn't want a number that's that's vastly different than what that average is. And we'll actually look at the, the, the graph coming up in just a moment that has more details on this. And those gas stations had an average of four truck fueling positions. So there's a mixture of vehicle and then passenger vehicle and then truck fueling positions. And during that PM peak hour of the generator, it's, it's a 50-50 split. And that's expected at a gas station that over an hour, all the vehicles, all the trips that are generated, half of them are entering and half exiting because if someone comes, maybe they only spend five or 10 minutes and then they leave. So that 50-50 average makes sense. We are told, we, we're given the average, average rates for all vehicles of 21.78 trips per fueling position and 8.03 trips, heavy vehicle for, for the, on the truck side, we're looking at the truck fueling positions per fueling position for that. The range of rates that we're seeing was between 9.2 and 43.2, and the standard deviation of that average rate was 9.35. So we can already see that, that 9.35 is already low, so if we do need to use that average value, uh, it's much, the average value is much outside of that 1.1 times the standard deviation rate. So we're, we'd be good to use the average rate if we need to. Here's our data plot. So each X represents an, a data point, and we can see they range from a minimum of eight to a maximum of 20. So that's an important thing to look at. Is your location within those bounds of the data that were collected to develop this? And there's only one point at 20 and there's nothing above 16. So even anything above 16 may be somewhat questionable, but for us, the 14 looks good. We're in that, that core range that I would say is eight to eight to 16. 
And again, these are the number of vehicle fueling positions. Um, we are given the fitted curve equation here. And this is the solid line. R squared is really low. And you can see it doesn't really line up well with the data. So the, the low R squared means that we should not use that fitted equation. That means we hopefully can use the average rate and looking at it in relation to the standard deviation, that is something that we can apply. So the independent variable, again, 14 fueling positions is within the limit, the overall 18, sorry, eight to 20 fueling position limit that we saw on the graph. We can't use that equation because the R squared is much less than 0.75. We can use the average rate though, because the standard deviation is less than 1.1 times the average rate. Uh, 1.1 times 9.35 is 10.285, which is lower than the 21.78 average rate. So our equation to calculate the number of trips for all vehicles is 21.78 trips per fueling position multiplied by 14 fueling positions gives us 304.92 trips. For analysis, we'd want to go ahead and just round this up to 305 trips for this example, looking at 14 fueling positions.